talk about the dual low pass gate. Uh, we talked about the complex oscillator and how the wave shaping is a, a major characteristic of the Buchla sound, especially in regards to the easel, which I think was the first implementation of a wave folder in an electronic instrument, which is pretty cool. Anyway, very strong on the Buchla sound coming out of the complex oscillator. But the other function that adds to the sort of Buchla characteristic is this low pass gate. So the low pass gate is a combination six decibel per octave filter and a VCA. And it's two sets of that. So you basically have two filters and two amps, which you know, a lot of the instruments that came out in the 1970s that were analog, that involved synthesis, uh, they only had one amp. This one had two uh, as early as 1973. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool thing. Basically, like a lot of, they discovered relatively quickly in the 70s, like you only really need, theoretically, you can get away with having a filter and an amp and one envelope because when you use the envelope to control the filter, you're basically controlling the amplitude of the signal anyway, because if you don't have any harmonics as they are filtered away by the filter, you don't have any sound. <laughs> so a lot of times they just put uh, one amp, one filter and one envelope to control the sound. Um, and sometimes like in Roland, you got the gate controlling the amp and then the envelope was free to control the filter. Basically, when it comes to the easel, you have the ability to use just a low pass filter or just a voltage controlled amp, or, and this is where Don was unique, he combined both of them to act as one entity, and then that is voltage controlled. So earlier, I'm sure we saw, if you take the orange output, which is your envelope generator, and plug it into, the gate one input, it allows you to control uh, the amplitude with the VCA or the filter cutoff point with the filter or both simultaneously. Let's start with a filter. So right now we're just directing the envelope that I've built over here, which is kind of a mildly, or like, it's not a fast or slow attack. It's kind of a medium attack and a decay. <laughs> And you'll notice the more I change this input level, the more the envelope affects the filter cutoff, which I think you'd expect. The same is true if we have it in voltage controlled amp mode. With it all the way up, you're going to get the full amplitude. And as you bring it down, you're going to get less and less amplitude. So then when we switch it into the combination mode, you get both simultaneously. So as it gets louder, it gets brighter, which is sort of consistent with acoustics. Usually in reality, when we strike an object or cause that object to oscillate, we're going to get a lot of high frequency content. And then as uh, we back away from that vibration, we get less of that. So you'll get that natural effect. You'll get more amplitude, more harmonics, with this, we're, with both of these working in tandem, which is probably the acoustic theory behind why it was made.
and it has a unique response because it uses Vactrols or the modern modern equivalent of Vactrols. Vactrols are uh, basically a coupling of an LED and a light receptor, and as the light gets brighter, you have more voltage, uh, which raises the voltage uh, with the receptor. So that is the core of this particular sound in the dual low pass gate. So not only do you have the six decibel per octave filter working in tandem with the VCA, but you also have them affected by basically light. There is light that is delivering the voltage necessary for this to work, which is, uh, it's a cool concept and it has this unique sound. Other uh, instruments do not sound like this. Of course, you have the ability to just bring the level up in many ways. You are just, you're doing the voltage control yourself there because as you bring the slider up on the level, you're going to get either greater amplitude or the filter cutoff point is going to be higher. And of course, the cool thing is, well, one of the many cool things is that you have the ability to have two different uh, sources happening simultaneously when you implement both gate one and gate two. As you'll remember, gate one is the signal path of the complex oscillator going into gate one. Uh, gate two is the signal path coming from the modulation oscillator. So you have two distinct signal paths, basically two different instruments, uh, two different voices. And that is a really cool thing. Right now, I have, uh, the envelope generator has a longer decay than what we're doing with the pulser. The pulser is a very short sawtooth pulse, which is controlling gate two. Envelope generator is controlling gate one. And you can see that here because I guess it would be more clear if I just used shorting bar. Okay, so this yellow output is of course your pulser. I have it controlling gate two. The orange output is your envelope generator and I have it controlling gate one. And we can set these to different functions. Gate two is now set to low pass filter and gate one is set to voltage controlled amp. We can switch. Really different sounds, of course, they would be. Uh, in one instance, you just have amplitude being changed. In one instance, you have the filter, the harmonic content being changed. So when you start thinking about how you have the ability to modulate uh, the wave folder in the complex oscillator, you have all these modulation possibilities in the complex oscillator and the same in the modulation oscillator where you can have a different wave shape or you can modulate it in a variety of ways. Um, you, you have the opportunity to create uh, interesting synthesis paths with really different outcomes. And you have the ability to create a wide variety of timbres using this structure. And this is why the easel is hard to understand is because Don had these concepts in mind. He wanted these outcomes and these architectures to work in the way that they do to generate these outcomes. So you get really unique and complex timbres and the ability to design much more complex shapes than a sawtooth wave going into a filter. And that's why this is a little more confusing. But the more you learn, the more it seems pretty straightforward.
Thank you.